Girls gave their affection and sex and love to other men, but never to me. You girls have never been attracted to me. I don't know why you girls aren't attracted to me, but I will punish you all for it. Mass murder in Santa Barbara, California dominates the news. A mad gunman kills six innocent people and shatters the lives of family and friends. Sounded crazy. A human foot had been mailed to Conservative Party headquarters. His torso was found stuffed in a suitcase on a The suspect is a 29-year-old model and self-styled porn actor named Luca Rocco Magnotta. Police agencies around the world are circulating photos of Luca Magnotta. Magnotta is wanted for the gruesome murder and dismemberment of 33-year-old Jun Lin. What's up and title of my fans? I just did what else you want me to say. Hey everyone. You're probably wondering, Haley, why? And I have an answer. It's been raining for the past few days, meaning that there has been no sun. I have no choice but to film according to Mother Nature's schedule. I hope this doesn't look bad. And if it does, sorry. But today we are going to be talking about the men who killed for YouTube fame. And those two men are Elliot Roger and Luca Magnata. It's either Magnata or Magnata. I've heard people pronounce it both ways. I'm probably going to pronounce it both ways. And the story that I'm going to start off with first is the story of Elliot Roger. Elliot Roger was born in London, England on July 24th, 1991, making him technically a Leo, but he's more on the Leo cancer cusp. His father, Peter, was actually a British film director, most known for his second unit director position in the game Hunger Games, as well as his mom. His mom was also very into filmmaking and she actually played one of the nurses in the Indiana Jones movie. For the first five years of Elliot's life, his parents were together. They lived in the UK. They had a lot of money because both of his parents were famous film stars. So he just kind of describes his own childhood, the first five years to be nothing but happiness and bliss. He was around five going on six. Him and his family decided to pack up everything and move to Los Angeles. Now for the parents and everyone involved basically it was just not a good idea. Elliot did not like LA whatsoever. He ended up getting bullied a lot at school. He was an outcast. He was always getting made fun of for his height. Girls never really liked him. Seven years old that is when his parents actually got a divorce. Is my jacket making noise? I feel like my jacket is making noise. I take it off for the time being because I'm I yeah my jacket was definitely making noise. What the heck? So now he was living some weeks with his mom and some weeks with his dad. This just kind of made him even more depressed and he actually started seeing a therapist at eight years old. He went to an all boys Catholic school and even the kids at his school used to bully him all the time. He even describes one instance where Elliot fell asleep on one of the desks at school and while he was sleeping the boys taped his head to the desk and when he woke up they all started laughing. He would never really fight back because he was was super, super shy, scared to say anything, talk to anyone. In his teenage years, he went from a private school to a public school, and that is also when he was diagnosed with PDD, pervasive mental disorder, where basically he was just kind of delayed as far as social and communication skills. And then at 16 years old, that is when his dad decided to remarry, and so technically Elliot got a stepmom who he absolutely despised. He did not like his stepmom. He described her as being horrible and not a good parent and kind of only using his father for his money. He says that he feels like his parents just weren't really doing their parenting job. An issue such as like getting bullied at school and he went to his parents for guidance and what to do next. Instead of his parents being very nurturing and telling him that it's going to be okay or giving him advice on what to 
do next. They sort of just pawned him off to the professionals and didn't really talk to him about anything. Even when he got diagnosed with his PDD, they didn't really do anything to try to bring him out of his shell. They mostly just kind of gave him multiple therapists and counselors and life coaches. They basically just said, oh, you got a problem? Don't tell me, tell your therapist. They'll know what to say, sort of thing. But during this transition, going from private school to public school, Elliot's whole online persona completely changed. He felt that since he used to go to private school, obviously private schools cost a lot more to go to than public school, he felt immediately like he was better than everyone else. He used to post online talking about how amazing he was and how well he dressed. People just saw this as insanely cocky and didn't take him seriously whatsoever. At the age of 18, that is when he decided to start his YouTube channel called Elliot Rogers Official Blog, where he would basically post vlogs. And a lot of people just like now describe these vlogs as incel vlogs. Hey, Elliot Roger here. I'm sitting in my car making another entry in my collection of vlogs. Today, I want to talk about the kind of men that girls are attracted to. Ever since I hit puberty, I've wanted girls. I've desired girls. I've been sexually attracted to girls. But they've never shown any attraction back to me. And during that time, I've trying to question why. He doesn't understand that girls will always go for guys that will hurt them. There was this one story he was telling where he saw a very gorgeous and beautiful woman sitting in the passenger seat of a very ugly man who was also driving a very ugly car and he was just filled with rage seeing that. He was just throwing little tantrums on YouTube. The whole incel community chimed in and they were like, yes, we totally feel you, Elliot. You're a king. We think women should should bow down to us men we started this thing are you kidding me anyways not really like sub reddit internet groups that were also incels and felt this way too women shouldn't get all the power and why is it that women turn an eye when it comes to a gentleman but then when it comes to someone that will hurt them they're all over them like do i need to hurt girls to get attention that sort of thing. Once he graduated high school, he went on to pursue Santa Barbara City College. The reason why he decided to go to college is because he was actually a virgin and he was very embarrassed about it. And he was told that, you know, college is time of your life that you're gonna have all these amazing experiences and do all these great things. Two years into college, none of that had happened for him. He never even had his first kiss. He describes that the more lonelier he felt, the more angrier he got despise looking at happy couples or women just basically walking the street. Described his experience with, you know, seeing happy couples or seeing a woman walk down the street, that the world was trying to spite him and that the world was a cruel, cruel place and it is an injustice to him. Ever since I've hit puberty, I've been forced to endure an existence of loneliness, rejection, and unfulfilled desires. All because girls have never been attracted to me. Girls gave their affection and sex and love to other men, but never to me. You girls have never been attracted to me. I don't know why you girls aren't attracted to me, but I will punish you all for it. It's an injustice, a crime. I don't know what you don't see in me. I'm the perfect guy. And yet you throw yourselves at all these obnoxious men instead of me, the supreme gentleman. I will punish all of you for it. <laughs> to me like from these vlogs he was just very materialistic he just felt like oh if i have tons of money and a really nice car and i look really good that means girls will throw themselves at me when in reality most girls just aren't like that like any of those reality shows where like a traditionally beautiful woman will be with a traditionally ugly guy it's because i don't think women really care looks can only last so long and i think women sort of understand that so I don't know. I feel like women are just more in the aspect of like, 
if you're nice to us, then that's all that really matters. You know, looks are only temporary and they're not going to last a very long time. Unless I'm just speaking for myself. Um, did I, <clears throat> did my voice crack? I'm not nervous. It was actually around this time where he was prescribed a medicine called Pris, Prisperdone? Risperdone? I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's an antipsychotic and it helps with bipolar and schizophrenia. And he actually told the doctors that he refused to take it because after doing very extensive research on what this medicine was, he just did not want to take it. Doctors can only prescribe you medicine. They can't really force you to take medicine you don't want to take. He didn't want to take these medications and he was still seeing multiple therapists and counselors and life coaches who were trying to tell him the right thing to do. You'll find a girl one day, but for some reason he just felt like every time he heard that, people were trying to attack him and tell him lies. So this kind of, you know, sent him into another spiral of not even really showing up to his therapy appointments anymore. In 2010, so this was around like his first year of college, one day there was a happy couple walking out of a restaurant and he just felt so much rage looking at this happy couple. As the couple was walking out of the restaurant into their car, he just went up to them and just threw his coffee at both of them and drove off. And this was the very first time that Elliot has actually acted upon his rage. And he said that in this moment, he felt extremely powerful. Seeing the fear in their eyes and knowing that he was in control of their happiness now, he just kind of got a kick out of that, which actually plays in pretty big later on. He continued this trope of just attacking random people. It was said that he actually went to an outside volleyball court and brought spray guns full of orange juice and just started spraying a bunch of people that were playing volleyball. And it kind of, again, made him feel very powerful. So he decided to move away from spray guns and move towards possible real guns. June of 2011, he makes a video on YouTube titled Day of retribution. He just talks briefly about his entire life story and he talks very vaguely about a day of retribution, that there will be a day where he will get his revenge. Since he had a very small YouTube following, no one really batted an eye at this. August of 2011, that is when he actually got two roommates that bullied him about still being a virgin. Elliot felt very targeted, so he wished to have two different roommates and these two new roommates they were like computer science majors they were also super quiet and shy like Elliot so the people thought that possibly you know if he got around people that were like him then he would thrive a lot better turns out Elliot hated the both of them he just felt like they were nerds and needed to be killed this guy was filled with so much rage that like anything at all just completely made him so mad. January of 2012, one of his roommates actually had a girl over. And again, since he hates his roommate and he hates women, when the girl left, he actually started insulting the woman to his roommate. He even got so mad that he actually called the police on his roommate and said that his roommate was actually stealing his candles. He was so mad that his roommate brought a girl over and so he called the police and told the police, hey, my roommate is stealing my candles. Lock him up. You know, it's a candle now. Next day it's gonna be my car. And then the police were like, okay. And then they arrested him. Ended up charging him a small fine, but he was arrested on the account of petty theft. Spring of 2012, this is where Elliot really started to get into the Mega Million. He was researching about the Mega Million all the time. He was playing it all the time. He used to get a $1,100 allowance from both of his parents every month. And he said that he spent around $700 worth of it every month on his mega million addiction. He thought that maybe if he got all of this money and this luxurious lifestyle that he will, you know, be king of the world and he will then get everything he wants. He was so deep into the mega million that he would even drive hours and hours to different states, even Arizona, just to play the mega million in that state. He ended up never winning anything big. There was this one, I think it was like 132 million 
million dollars that he was really playing for and he like bought so many tickets and then he ended up losing so he ended up out of a rage just decided to take his laptop and slam it on the ground and completely shattered the entire thing because he thought that you know like this was his ticket this was his ticket to happiness and a life full of love and light and that he would definitely get everything he ever wanted in life with this money remember earlier when i was saying that he sprayed all those people with orange juice and he felt a lot of power he went to go get his laptop fixed and while waiting to get it fixed there was a shooting range right across the street while it was getting fixed he actually decided to go over to the shooting range and just check it out surprisingly he said that the first time he ever held a gun he actually felt very uneasy and extremely uncomfortable he said that he was actually scared of the gun at first and he looked down at himself and thought you know what am i even doing here why am i doing this but then after firing a few shots of the gun he then realized like oh this is my day of retribution i've been talking about this day of retribution and this is it this is what i'm going to do he ended up getting his foid card december of 2012 that is actually when he bought his very first gun he continued to look deeper and deeper into different types of guns he also started to get very deep into school shooters and murderers and started creating like a hit list of places that he wanted to go to for his day of retribution he was basically planning a mass shooting spring of 2013 that is actually when he bought his very second gun he said that he wanted at least three guns because he wanted one gun on his holster and then he wanted two handguns in order to get a lot more you know death spring 2013 to july 20th at this point he was just kind of trying to gain up his collection like collection of different weapons all of his guns he had knives different types of ammunition july 20th four days before his 22nd birthday he decided to get extremely drunk and he had a mission that he was going to lose his v card that night he got very very drunk and he went out to sorority houses trying to get women to sleep with him you know a lot of people say that you tend to speak very truthfully when you're drunk he actually saw two women hanging out by the ledge of like a small building and they were both drinking and talking to this his words ugly man and so he goes over there and starts insulting the women and saying why do you women always go for these ugly men like I am so nice I am so perfect why don't you ever see me the way that you see them and of course the girls are like who are you like I uh he actually starts to try and push the two girls off the ledge of the building now the man that the two girls were talking to actually chimed in and actually pushed Elliot off the ledge of the small building and ended up breaking his ankle and so he starts walking away on this broken ankle and then all of a sudden halfway you know home he's like oh my god I forgot my gucci sunglasses at the house so he goes to the house and he ends up going to the wrong house and he knocks on the door and he demands that he has his gucci sunglasses and everyone's like dude we don't have your sunglasses i don't know what you're talking about like you're clearly drunk you're not getting in here and so he started to get extremely frustrated until eventually they just started throwing punches and since elliot was by himself there was no one to back him up but of course the frat guys had their whole group so they basically just beat elliot to the ground police showed up and then he was taken to the hospital and that is when he told the police this very false story in that the guys were actually trying to beat him up for no reason and just like made up this entire story the whole time his father was actually there in the hospital room listening to all of this when the father came out he always used to say elliot was an incredible liar sometimes a scaringly incredible liar he would literally just look at you dead in the eyes and be so serious and just completely lie and so when he was telling the police this entire information of course they believed him and so no charges were put since now he had a broken ankle his day of retribution had to be set a little bit farther than what he thought it was going to be he was both 
wolf on crutches and sort of bedridden and so he took this time to construct his plan of his day of retribution. Spring of 2014 that is when he constructed his three phase plan. Phase one he was going to stab both of his roommates and kill him in their apartments that they all shared together and then after that he was going to lure multiple people specifically good looking people into his apartment and kill them and torture them because they probably had the most intercourse so then he felt very jealous and then after he felt satisfied with the amount of lives he has taken in the apartment he would then move on to phase two phase two was the attack on women he would go to a sorority house called alpha phi because he felt that alpha phi had the most beautiful sorority girls and would just basically open fire and shoot absolutely any girl he saw phase three rolls around and that is when he would have a showdown at the house or the house that he broke his ankle at and he got into this huge altercation with all these guys and they beat him to the ground that was going to be phase three he was going to get into that house and again open fire at everyone he saw and then afterwards he was going to schedule upload a video the video called retribution which was a two hour long video talking about everything it was talking about his life and why he felt the way that he felt the incel community how he was still a virgin he never had his first kiss how he hated women his you know three-phase plan of his day of retribution obviously he couldn't upload this video now because it would completely spoil himself the cops will be called so instead he was going to schedule the video to upload a few minutes before shooting himself so that was a lot i hope you stayed with me again in his videos like i said his day of retribution was vaguely mentioned but it was nothing definite plan he basically always just used to say one day I will get my revenge but with these videos his mom was actually watching them and got very very concerned for her son Elliot so she ended up calling the police and doing a wellness check on Elliot the police went to his house and decided to ask him a few questions on if he was doing okay but Elliot since as I said earlier he was a very scaringly good liar he basically just told the police it was a big misunderstanding and that he was doing completely fine and his mom was being dramatic and the police believed him. May 23rd, 2014, there was going to be a lot of parties that night, a lot of people because it's May, so it's like the end of the year, everybody's celebrating because they're almost on summer break. And on May 23rd, 2014, that is when he decided that is gonna be his day of retribution, phase one. He was following according to his plan, phase one, he ended up successfully killing and stabbing both of his two roommates, as well as luring only one person into the apartment. Since, as I said, no one really talked to Elliot, no one was really falling for his game or sort of like going into his apartment at all, except for one person, and that person he ended up stabbing to death as well. After the fact, when the police were investigating the crime scene, they actually found blood in the hallway and it kind of made it look like as this guy was being lured into the apartment, it seemed like Elliot was kind of already striking at him before he even got into the apartment, found a bunch of bloody paper towels and regular towels in the bathroom as if he tried to clean up the crime scene, but then realized like, you know, I'm gonna die tonight anyways, what's the point of cleaning all of this up? So right before leaving his apartment to go on to phase two and go to the Alpha Phi house, he actually made a transcript of everything that he said in his retribution video. And he emailed this transcript very quickly to all of his therapists, his life coach, his mom, and his dad. And immediately when the mother had received this, she started reading it through and immediately called Elliot's father. And when he picked up the phone him himself was also reading the same exact email and so then they both collectively decided to call the police but the thing is that this transcript was so extremely long that you didn't even get to his plan till the very very end the, the police only have like tops five minutes to figure all of this out once they find out his next move after the apartment he could already be on his next move to the phase three jumping back into what elliot is doing right now 
Elliot is on his way to the Alpha Phi house and immediately when he got there, he followed through with his phase two and just opened fire at random women that he saw. He actually ended up killing two women who were just like standing outside of the house and everybody heard the gunshots. Everyone started running all over the place, went back out into his car where he was driving extremely recklessly and extremely fast. He actually parked his car and went into a random deli and just started opening fire in this deli and ended up killing one man. Eventually, he makes his way to the house, the house that he broke his ankle, he left his Gucci sunglasses, they beat him to the ground. But when he got there, thank God, the door was locked and he could not get in. There was no one outside. There was no one in the backyard. There was no fence. He had no time to jump a fence. There was just no escape route if he were to actually get inside. Started panicking. He started freaking out because his phase three was now sort of falling through a little bit. And so he started to panic, but not panic too, too much. He just got back into his car and started driving extremely recklessly all over the place. At this point, the police station is ringing up a storm. He was shooting at pedestrians. He was running over people. He was shooting at people in the street. He shot someone and killed someone in a deli. By this point, the police station is like buzzing with all these different phone calls. There's a guy with just an open fire shooting at random people until at one point he actually swerved his car and crashed into a pole. But eventually when the police got to his car, they realized that he had actually shot himself in the head shortly after the car crash. The aftermath of all of this is that obviously Elliot is dead so they can't arrest anyone. They started to look into his YouTube videos and then that is when they also read the transcript. Ended up killing six people and injuring 14. After the fact, the families of the innocent people who have died had actually come forward with their statements. Even to this day, continue to fight for better gun control because they felt like if he was never given a gun or just easily given something as like a psych evaluation or even just looked at his criminal record or his past, they would clearly know that he had some intense mental issues, mental issues that, you know, you should not be handing a gun to. I'm not saying that like, if you are mentally ill, you should not be able to I mean, yeah, if you're mentally ill, you should not be in the hands of a gun. Crazingly, remember earlier how I said that Elliot was a part of all of those online incel communities? Well, after Elliot had completed his day of retribution and had died, all of these incel communities were actually praising Elliot and calling him a very good guy and thank you for doing the work that we wish we could. He ended up killing two innocent women as well as injuring a bunch of women. YouTube ended up taking the video down, but there are many sources where you can't see the full video, but you can see like pieces of it. The transcript is extremely racist, homophobic, and misogynistic. So I'm just telling you that now before you read it. That's the story of Elliot. Now we're gonna move on. I feel like I should give you a minute. Let's take a breather, pause this video, go grab a snack, go grab some water. I don't wanna jump from one dark story to the next. So let's, uh, let's have a little convo before jumping into this next story because it's just as dark. How are you? How are you? Uh, I'm going for like a grunge look today. As I said, it's been raining a lot recently. It's not been it whatsoever. Actually, the sun, well, not the sun, just light is starting to beam into my room once again. So that's very fun. I cannot wait for fall. I have so many ideas and things planned for the month of October because it's spooky month, you know, spooky wooky month, Halloween time. What are you guys gonna be for Halloween? I'm probably gonna be either a Thurman from Kill Bill, Tomb Raider, or I don't know. I don't know. Maybe we should do a couple's costume. That'd be so cute. Oh my God, that'd be so cute. What the heck? What if I was like Chucky and you were the girl Chucky? Or if I was a girl Chucky and you were the boy Chucky? That'd be so cute. That's enough chit chat. Now we can go into our next story of Luca Magnata. Luca Magnata was born I didn't even realize this until after I was like because I researched about Elliot and I was like, ooh, okay. And then I went over to Luca. Luca and Elliot have the same birthday. July 24th, except Luca was born in 1982. And they're both like Leos, but they're on the Leo Cancer cusp. 
which I thought was really interesting because as you'll see, Luca and Elliot have so many similarities. They're both very obsessed with their looks. They really care about, you know, wealth and how they present themselves. Leos tend to be very self-obsessed, but they are also cancers, meaning that they're very passionate in everything that they do, even when that comes to murder which again, you'll see. Luca Magnato was actually born as Eric Clinton Newman in Ontario, Canada to his two younger sisters and his mom and dad. He actually had a pretty rough childhood. His parents divorced when he was a very young age. He was always getting bullied at school. The only person that he really got along with was one of his sisters. She is like the only person that he describes to be like the most beautiful person he's ever seen and absolutely adores her. Since his parents had split, it was actually for a short period of time where he went to go move in with his grandparents and he grew a very close relationship with his grandparents until his grandparents also got divorced. So he ended up having to move back with his mom. As for his relationship with his dad, he did not have a good relationship with his dad either. After the divorce, they didn't really speak only when they had to. He was also homeschooled for most of his life because his parents said that the world was so dark and cruel and he should not be exposed to any of that. During his homeschooled years and following into graduating high school, he tried to get into modeling and acting because he said that he had a natural love for the camera. He didn't really get many acting deals. He never really got any modeling deals. People were just rejecting him. Also craved attention as well. He didn't really get much attention at home. As I said, since his parents are divorced, there was really no parental figure. And then of course, when his grandparents also got divorced, he kind of had a very skewed perception of what love was. In 2004, when Luca was 22 years old, he actually befriended a 21 year old woman that he found online but this 21 year old woman was actually mentally disabled and had the mindset of an 8 to 12 year old and he actually took advantage of this girl many many times and sexually assaulted her as well as taking all of her credit cards and paying off all of his overdue debts not only did he sa her multiple times he actually supposedly filmed it as well i'll say it once but i'll say it again and i'll I'll say it till the day I die. I love the government. I think the government is so awesome, so cool. And this is also something super awesome and super cool that they did. Uh, the mother of the girl was like, hey, Luca, you're taking all of her credit cards. You're using her for sexual favors when she has the mindset of an eight to 12 year old. She doesn't know any better. I'm gonna, you know, call the police. Her mom got legal forces involved and tried to do fraud charges on Luca because he was just using her credit cards for his own personal use without her acknowledgement as well as SAing her multiple times. But since the legal system is so awesome, so cool, Luca ended up not getting a single repercussion for anything. All of the essay charges were dropped. All of the fraud charges were mysteriously dropped. Luca got absolutely no time. All Luca did was get a slap on the wrist and say, hey, psh, you're so silly. Don't do that. Take your meds. And that's what they told him. They basically said, take your meds because he was on medication for multiple things like depression, anxiety, bipolar, antipsychotic, and he wasn't taking any of his meds. And so the police were like, take your meds, you silly goose. And then he was, and then he was gone. It's so insanely, it's so messed up. Legal system is just like, oh, you're a woman and you said that you were sexually and harassed but then when they see someone going 25 in a school zone they're like <laughs> it's like insulting it's very insulting and I hate it I hate it here I hate it so much uh, it's just so frustrating what the heck after all of this happened Luca decided that he needed to rebrand himself he couldn't go out into the world as Eric Newman still so then that is when in 2006 he decided to legally change his name to Luca Magnata and this was also around the time where he actually got a new girlfriend named Barbie I mean it showed you know Huh. When I was with him, just, just his body language stuff he would do sometimes. Um, 
It's just, an, you know, in his character, you could just... He said he wanted to be famous one day. I mean, that was his dream. He said, one day I'm going to be famous. As well as him now being a full-time adult film star and sex worker, loved and needed lots of attention. And there was actually one point where Luca and Barbie had broken up. And then right afterwards, Luca went with this guy named Henry. And Henry actually came out after the fact about their relationship and said that the whole time Luca was extremely self-obsessed and always wanted pictures taken of him and really highly loved himself online. But when it came to intimacy, he was very scared of it. He did not like to be intimate with people. And I don't know if that was because it was specifically Henry he didn't want to do those things with. It was at this time where Luca was continuing to try and try to get into modeling and acting, but all of these dead ends really Really just led him nowhere. The more he got rejected, the more angrier he got. With all of this, he started to really experiment and be very interested into serial killers and ways of killing and how to execute and get away with a murder. There was this big thing going on at the time. This was like during 2009 and 10 of the two girl, one cup. He decided to create his own version of it. One boy, two kittens. Trigger warning, animal abuse. He filmed himself putting two kittens into a vacuum sealed bag and sucking all of the air out and he filmed all of this and he had a hood on so you couldn't really see his face and it was so messed up because as he was doing it he kind of loved on the kittens before doing it like he was playing with them and he uploaded it to youtube once he uploaded it to youtube there was this facebook girl by the name of body movin that is like her alias she found this video and so she decided to upload it to facebook and saying who is this person? This person needs to be arrested. Oh my God, this is disgusting. It started a search for this man, trying to figure out who this man was, who did this heinous crime. People did not know it was Luca. People were just trying to figure out who this guy was. There's a really, really good Netflix documentary called Don't F With Cats. If you really want like an in-depth story on this entire investigation, Luca was very self-obsessed. He loved when people gave him attention and boy, did he get it. Body Movin had actually created a Facebook group in order to hunt down who this cat killer was and it ended up getting 4,000 people just overnight. Luca at this point saw very big power in what he was doing. He kind of saw it as a way to control people's emotions and saying like, oh, catch me if you can. If you've ever seen the movie, Catch Me If You Can with Leonardo DiCaprio, that sort of thing where it was like, they think they're so close, but they're so far away. He loved all of this attention that he was getting. One day, the leader of this Facebook group actually got an anonymous tip from one of them members suspected that the person who wrote this dm to body movement was actually luca himself random anonymous tip said that the person you're looking for his name is luca magnata he's from russia he's a model and actor and he lives in los angeles hollywood now why a lot of people suspect that luca wrote this is because at the time literally no one was suspecting luca at all no one even thought that it was him in the first place no one even knew i mean we figured out after the fact that no one knew that he was committing these crimes at all he lived by himself so there was no one around leaders of this group it was body movement and a guy named john green they basically teamed up on this case and decided to look into luca magnata and they found so many weird details about luca photoshopped pictures of luca at like the miami beach sign but then they found the original photo or like these pictures of Luca in a hot tub with all of these beautiful people, but then that was also photoshopped. So he basically just kind of constructed his own false life online. He was always posting random pictures. Oh, I'm in Los Angeles right now. But then later on that day, he'd be like, oh, I'm actually in Europe right now, or I'm in Paris. Purposely trying to make his life look so much more interesting than what it actually was. I didn't even mention this, but Luca had actually started a rumor and made like photoshopped pictures of him and this like really big actress and basically like started a rumor that him and this actress were dating so that a lot of the press would be again obsessed with him and so then it wasn't until one day he actually called himself into the press office and told the press his statement of like 
oh, I don't know why people are saying that we're together. We're not together. Like we had a little affair, but that was it. He started a rumor and then he shut his own rumor down to again, get him more publicity and attention. And it's so crazy to watch this interview now because now you look at that interview and you're like, oh, it's just this guy like debunking some claims. But in reality, he had just vacuum sealed two kittens. It's just so crazy to see him out in the open living his life. Fall of 2010, Luca continued to post these insanely photoshopped pictures trying to make himself look like bigger than what he actually is until one day the two main people, Body Movement and John Green decided to reverse search image these pictures that he was posting and actually got in a specific location of where he was at and that location gave them Toronto, Canada. He actually uploaded this other video where he had, again, trigger warning animal abuse because this is like really, really messed up. He taped a kitten to a broomstick and drowned it and uploaded it again to YouTube. And so then people again were like freaking out, like, oh my God, you're kidding. Like, this is insane. Body Movin' and John Green decided to report this to the Toronto police, giving them all of the information that they had and saying that yes, it was Luca Magnata because they started looking at his photos and found similarities such as like the same kittens and the same jacket. They told the Toronto police, if you don't catch him now, he's going to move on to something bigger. Like it's cats now, but tomorrow it may be a real person. Toronto police, since this was just internet based upon speculation, there really wasn't any reason for them to move forward, which makes no sense to me. But anyway, Toronto police said that they couldn't do anything further because they had no clarification if these facts were real. Facebook group just at this point felt extremely helpless. They didn't really know what to do because they had all of this significant evidence and things that pointed to Luca but for some reason, the police just did not do anything about it until one day, uh, Body Movin' and John Green had had a anonymous person come through that said that Luca may be possibly in Montreal. So now they contacted the Montreal police and told them everything, but same as the Toronto police, the Montreal police just didn't really do anything about it. They saw it as, you know, basic internet drama and didn't really think too much of it. But all of this happened between of November and December of 2011 just to, you know, help you out with the timeline here. A man named Justin Lin, aka Jun Lin, was an international student from Wuhan, China. He had moved to Canada to go to college and major in computer science and engineering. He was, as I said, Chinese. And in Chinese culture, it is a kind of like normalcy that the eldest son takes care of the parents after the fact. And Jun Lin was the eldest son. And so his plan after college was was to just dedicate the rest of his life taking care of his parents. On May 1st, 2012, that is when Justin decided to move to Griffith, 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 town apartments in Canada and that's the same apartment that Luca had lived in. And a month prior to Justin moving in on April of 2012 that is when it is said that Luca had actually uploaded a video. Uh, it wasn't a video to like his murdering channel or anything. Basically urging everyone to join the hunt for Luca Magnata and to join the insanely huge Facebook group. Uh, that's why a lot of people believe that it was Luca because like no one would make a video like that like urging people to join especially a video like that. Usually people would just make like a poster flyer or something like that. And the fifth estate actually spoke with the police and when the police were talking, they were seeming very hesitant. The information that we had was that he was in Toronto, but if he was bunking with someone or living somewhere else, there was no fixed address. So you're telling me here that he was living in Toronto, as we know, there was no way to find him with whatever resources you had or the Toronto Police Service, or the RCMP, whoever else that you've reached out to? With all these agencies together, no one could find him in the city of Toronto? Not at that point, no. Really? So the Toronto police actually got in contact with the Montreal police, spoke about Luca Magnata, but the Montreal police couldn't do anything because they said since they had no record of Luca ever living in Montreal and they had no warrant for his arrest, they had really no choice. They really couldn't do anything, which again, I think is craziness. They literally, if there is a murderer on the loose and you're like, sorry, nothing we can do, 
quippling. So on May 15th, that is when Luca had actually been trying to promote his new movie. He called his murder films basically like movies called One Man, One Ice Pick. He made cover art for this movie. He made like fake fan accounts. He was making comments on like random posts saying like, oh, does anybody know where I can watch this movie? I've been trying to watch it for weeks. Basically hyping it up even though the movie hadn't even been released yet. On May 25th, 2012, that is when Luca had released his movie One Man One Ice Pick onto um, a website called bestgore.com. He uploaded an 11 minute video called One Man One Ice Pick where it was Luca with his hood up and a man, a naked man laying tied to a bed blindfolded and Luca took an ice pick, stabbed the man to death with a ice pick and a knife and even performed necrophilia on the man with a Casablanca poster in the background. Now why the Casablanca poster is important is because if you've ever seen Casablanca, there's a part in the film where the woman actually kills a man with an ice pick. A lot of people thought that maybe that was symbolic in a way that he was trying to recreate that scene in the movie with the ice pick. Once the murder was actually done, that is when the police actually started to take action and try to figure out who this man was. I didn't even like really mention this earlier or like really talk deeply about it, but Luca, although he was like a terrible, terrible man, he was very intelligent in what he did and that's typically what you see in like a lot of really good serial killers is that they are you know horrible horrendous people but they are very smart with what they were doing with this whole Facebook group Luca knew that this Facebook group would dissect his videos frame by frame trying to figure out who he was in one of his videos he was playing in the background a Russian TV show so people dissecting the video would think that he is from Russia and then remember Remember that anonymous tip earlier? The person that you're looking for is Luca. He's from Russia. People would think like, oh, he's in Russia because he has a Russian TV show playing in the background. He wasn't in Russia, obviously me and you know that he was in Canada. Another thing that he would do is that he actually had cigarettes in one of his videos, but these are cigarettes that are only sold in European countries. He actually bought and shipped these specific cigarettes from Europe to Canada and placed it in his video. So the people dissecting the video will look at the cigarettes and think to themselves, oh, these are cigarettes that only are found in Europe. He's obviously in Europe even though he wasn't in Europe. There was also a vacuum cleaner in one of his, like the background of his videos that again was only sold in Europe. And so when people were freaking out, like, oh my God, all these signs point to Europe, he's in Europe. He was never in Europe. He was just basically purposely putting those little Easter eggs in there. So then people feel really good about themselves. Like, oh my God, we got him. Like he slipped up when in reality, he didn't slip up. He was doing those things on purpose. But anyways, going back to the whole murder movie. On May 26th, uh, June Lin, his work, he started to call around to June Lin's friends because June Lin had not shown up for work that day. And they were very concerned because usually June, he was very good about his work. Always showed up on time. He always clocked in, clocked out. He was very good about calling in sick when he was sick, but this morning he just didn't show up. His friends checked his apartment, realized he wasn't there, and that's when he was declared as a missing person. They actually called his parents and asked them like, hey, have you heard from Jun Lin yet? And they said, no, we actually have not heard from him. May 29th, four days after the murder movie, a garbage man was taking out the trash of the Griffith Town apartment building and he found a suitcase that was super bloody and had an extremely bad smell to it. He opened up the suitcase, he actually found a human torso bloody clothes, Justin's identification, scissors, two knives, a screwdriver, an oscillating saw, I think that's how you pronounce that, and a hammer. And the police checked it out and identified the body and said, yes, this is the body of Justin Lin. So I didn't really explain it that well of how Luca and Justin even... I'm gonna close that because...
That's terrifying. <sighs> How Luca even met Justin in the first place is that Luca had actually put a Craigslist ad saying if anybody wanted any kinky sex, preferably males, and Justin replied to this ad saying, yes, I am interested. And so Justin went to Luca's apartment. Luca took Justin up and you know the rest. The creepiest part about all of this is that you can see the security footage of Justin wearing this yellow shirt. And then after the fact, like after the murder had happened, when Luca came back to, you know, like dispose of everything, he was actually wearing Justin's yellow shirt. And if you guys are familiar with murder stories, then you know that typically murderers will take something from their victim sort of as like a trophy to sort of like relive that moment and stuff. And so yeah, he was literally wearing the t-shirt of the person that he just killed. And that was like super, super uh, messed up and yeah. So I didn't even, yeah, didn't even really explain how they met. I was just like, yep, here's this guy and he killed this guy, like, yeah. But anyways, enjoy. Police started taking this case extremely seriously and then they started taking the whole cat group on Facebook very seriously. It was crazy how like the whole entire time they just did not care until the worst actually happened. And then that's when they actually started to care about everything. We looked into the surveillance footage at the apartment and actually saw Luca disposing of the garbage bags from his apartment around 2.30 in the morning. As I said, he was very, very good about covering up his steps. He was constantly on the go, Paris, Miami, Canada, all over. And he also used aliases a lot. So he had like a fake passport, a fake ID, and when they would try to reverse search the videos that he was posting, that location he no longer lived at anymore. The police were constantly trying to catch him, but he just left as soon as they got there. It wasn't a thing of like, oh, we got there and then we almost got him. He just left. It was more of like, oh, we got there and then he left two days ago, you know, like they were so far behind him. Now, when they went up to the apartment, obviously Luca wasn't there, but they did discover the crime scene of where it happened, blood all over the bed, a bunch of dead animals such as cats and dogs. Also a specific uh, quote written on the wall behind the door. If you don't like the reflection, don't look in the mirror, I don't care. A lot of people try to kind of pick apart and figure out what that means, while other people just think that he was probably so psychologically far gone that he just was making up things that didn't make sense or just saying things that didn't make sense. And that was just one of the things that, you know, only made sense to him. So since Luca was successful in killing a human being, this is when the Facebook group started to blame themselves a little bit, thinking that, did they do too little? Is there something more that they could have done? Could they like have gone to Canada and talk to the police in person? Or did they do too much? Did they actually give Luca all the attention that he needed? And they were actually the motivators in Luca pursuing this heinous crime. Well, as I said, it was just Justin's torso that was found. And then a few days went by and it was actually found out that Luca had shipped Justin's multiple body parts to places all over Canada and they found out by people like, you know, complaining that they found a severed foot or a severed hand. Justin's family and parents flew all the way from Wuhan to come to the service and they kind of just made as best of a service as they could. I mean, they didn't even have Justin's full body. His body was spread across, you know, Canada, so they couldn't really do a proper memorial. Now you're probably wondering, where is Luca? Where did Luca go after the fact of after that he killed Justin, he cut up the body, he performed all these insane things on camera, where did he go? Well, the police checked his apartment and they couldn't find anything. They couldn't find a computer or a laptop or even a Wi-Fi router. It's basically a set, you know? It was genuinely a set, like for a movie. They said the police didn't really care about it too much until that video was posted and the body wasn't found until four days after the murder. So Luca already has a four day head start on everyone. What Luca did is that he took a trip to Paris with his own passport, with his Luca Magnata passport, since it wasn't made to like the news or anything, his face and his name was only known online. Luca took a trip to Paris with his passport and in Paris, he actually stayed with a friend for two days and that friend was completely unaware of everything that Luca has done. His friend described Luca as like nonchalant. He was normal. He wasn't acting weird or funny at all. It wasn't until after Luca left when the 
the friend actually found out what Luca had done. After uh, he stayed with the friend for two days, he boarded a Euro Lines bus to Germany, Berlin, and Germany, Berlin is actually where Luca had been caught and very, like, so... Luca went into an internet cafe in Germany because as I said he can't use his own Wi-Fi or else he'll get tracked down and the employee was very aware of Luca and so when Luca walked in the door obviously the employee was like oh my god that's Luca McNaughta he's wanted for like murder the employee went to the back where all of the computers were where Luca was he was using one of the computers and out of the corner of the employee's eye he saw Luca basically just reading all these articles about himself, reading about what people were saying about him, everybody's like anger and fear and where is Luca? Like he was indulging in all of this. And there was also, I didn't even mention this earlier, there was a post that he made. Remember how he would like make posts made by himself, basically hyping up himself. There was this one post that was made to the Facebook group. It was like an anonymous one and it had links to every single article and news outlet that was made about Luca and it was supposed that that post was made by Luca so Luca was soaking all of this in he didn't really see any like bad in what he was doing he just enjoyed this attention a lot of people uh, compared him to Christian Bale from American Psycho his nickname is actually the Canadian Psycho because he's Canadian not American the employee was like oh my god this is definitely Luca so he calls the police and then that is when the German police actually took Luca into custody Luca at first tried to act very innocent he also tried to act theatrically mentally ill you know like movies and stuff i don't know like stereotypically mentally ill and so in this case that's what luca was doing when he was in like the interrogation room obviously he tried to like fake his identity like i'm not luca obviously but like then he said like yes i am luca but then every time the police came into the room it was like a switch and like he was automatically like super jittery and quiet and like he would say things and then like kind of like scratch on himself and like shake his head a little bit and like it looked like he was like on something but he wasn't on something because he was only acting like that when the police came in the room so eventually obviously the police were like you did it Luca they got him to confess after a long long time and then Luca eventually got life in prison for the murder of Jun Lin as well as fraud and running away from the police and just all these different charges as for Luca now he's still in jail I'm not sure of the exact jail that he's in but he's still alive he's 39 years old yeah so so that is the story of Elliot Roger, the woman hater and felt like everybody was against him and killed six people as well as Luca Magnata, who again was very self-obsessed and felt like the whole world was out to get him and so he put his anger on someone else. The craziest part about both of these cases is that they have the same exact birthday. I don't know if you're into astrology but like that is insane that they are so much alike and their ideologies were so much the same like i feel like if they met in real life it'd be honestly game over like they would be very very dangerous together is today's video i hope you guys enjoyed i went for like um okay remember how i was saying i think i said it like two videos ago i had watched scream the movie because it's on hbo max i watched scream the movie and i was like really into grunge and like drew barrymore and i was like yes this is my style well i've been really obsessed with 70s 80s thrillers this leather jacket um i don't know where this is from because i stole it from my sister this shirt is from five below this choker um i think i mentioned it if you know you know these earrings were a gift this ring is from spaceman studios i'll show you the full fit trigger warning i'm wearing skinny jeans Really, really hope you guys enjoyed as i said it's been raining a lot so the lighting was a little bit awkward in this video and i'm sorry about that i kind of just like put on the lamp then i also put a lamp oh my god because this looked so dark and i was like what am i gonna do so i literally just like put a lamp on the floor and the lamp is like facing over there and it looks good and you'll only know that fact unless you watched the end of the video. I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video. And if you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And if you want to follow me on Instagram or TikTok, those will be linked down below. As well as my PO box if you want to send me anything. 
Oh, I forgot to do spooky scary skeletons. I forgot to even introduce myself. Did I even introduce myself in the beginning? Okay, so uh, this is like what I kind of wanted to mention earlier, but I wanted to wait till the end. A lot of people were like talking about Elliot's case and being like, oh, if Elliot would have just gotten laid, like none of this would have happened. But like, I don't think people understand that it's not as easy as like, oh, if Elliot lost his V-card, none of this would have happened. He had this murderous rage inside of him already. And I don't think losing his V-card or getting a girlfriend was going to release any of that. If anything, he would be an insanely toxic and controlling boyfriend. He probably would not let his girlfriend go anywhere and even kill his girlfriend. It's in a way like when people talk like that or like when guys talk like that, it kind of feels like they're faking it like they're faking that they are polite and nice because they're mad and they want like a girl to respect them or something what is today today is the 13th <gasps> it's friday the 13th friday the third I just bit my tongue. If you're watching this on the day it's uploaded, happy Friday the 13th. What? I didn't even know that was today. How spooky. Oh my God, I'm gonna watch Michael Myers this weekend. I'm so excited because the very first Michael Myers actually happened on my birthday. It says it in the movie, not to flex. Um, huge flex. Actually, not that huge of a flex because I can't find it. This is a Mandela effect because I swear I think I saw it when I was like 10 and then I saw on the screen it said you know how usually in the beginning of the Halloween movies it says the date in 1980 something. I could have sworn it said June 13th but I can't find that scene anywhere. That's so awesome. That's so awesome. Thanks Michael. Again, really hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you guys next time. Do something that makes you happy today.